Good morning. Here we are. The day after Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so, hope everybody has recovered from the food coma they were in yesterday. <clears throat> we will uh, do our best here to... I'm trying to... The lighting isn't very good, is it, today? So, anyway, hope everyone is feeling well today and... <clears throat> Many of you are probably out doing that crazy Black Friday shopping. I don't want any part of that. So, Randy, I'm surprised you're not out Black Friday shopping. I'm really shocked. And so, Julie, good to see you. Miss Kosha, uh, Paula, or Kevin, not sure which one there. So, <clears throat> see a couple of you. So, Anyway, I hope everyone had a good day yesterday. Sean, happy Thanksgiving. Are you are you home or are you in uh, Montana? I'm not sure if that was just a quick road trip north and back or what. So, uh, Todd, glad you're on here. Miss Wendy, <clears throat> glad you're on here too. And uh, just uh, <clears throat> remember to continue to pray for each other. Miss Joyce, glad you're here. Been a lot of sickness and then a lot of new things for people, you know, that have lost people and, and uh, first Thanksgivings and that kind of thing. And so, uh, we need to be praying for you on Saturday, too. I know it's uh, Jeff's birthday and uh, we'll be praying for you. Miss Katie, glad you're on here. <clears throat> Probably a little warmer in Oklahoma than it is here today. So, but um, we had a good time Thanksgiving my uh, in-laws came down they just actually they just left and uh, headed back up to steamboat and had uh, some family over here uh, yesterday in uh, the Carnes and uh, in um, Phelps and the Brents and we just in the planks so had a good time so <clears throat> anyway, good to see everybody on here. Mark, glad you're on here too, out there in the wild state of Iowa. So, and Dan, probably warmer in North Carolina than he is here today too. So, but um, <clears throat> anyway, just want to get started and and uh, uh, a couple of things. I read this in in Proverbs today in in uh, Proverbs chapter 28 in verse 18. And it tells us, whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. And, and that the idea of walking uprightly has the idea of walking uh, in a mature fashion. And you're complete and you're sound. And, and so you are you're taking the word of God and you're applying the word of God. And, and you are walking in a way that is healthy and, and sound biblically. And... So, whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. And, and I believe the saved is uh, uh, more than salvation. I, I believe that uh, uh, it, it's also just in, in this world and, and uh, finding God's blessings. And, and you're not failing uh, so much along the way, but you're actually having victory and the world is not uh, controlling you. But he that is perverse or when when we think about being perverse you're just you're just crooked in all your ways and uh in his way shall fall at once and look this is a promise that God gives and and how it's important you know I, I guess it's kind of been a theme in my own devotions here lately about how to walk in a in a crazy world and and how to uh still be what what God wants us to be and there, there is no excuse for us not to walk uprightly, and we we need to we need to stay in the Word of God, and and not only stay in the Word of God, but figure out how to apply what we read that day, you know, and and to let it change our lives and and change our thinking, and and help us to be more of of what it is that that God wants us to be, and and understand that God does have it under control, and. Sometimes we, we live like maybe God doesn't know what he's doing and we want to kind of take control of things and grab the handlebars, you know, or whatever. And, and really God, God has it under control and we need to realize that and we need to trust him. And what we need to do is just walk maturely in, 
in the Word of God and and take and apply it. And everybody's look, everybody's at a at a different stage in their growth, and and I understand that. And and so you got to be long suffering and patient with others, and realize that not everyone understands the things that you do, or or maybe they understand more than you do. And and it's okay. You take what you know and and you apply it. That's that's a sign of maturity. And and that's taking the meat of the word. You you get past the milk and you start taking the word of God and applying it to your life and 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 you grow. And and in all of this, you just got to know that God's got it under control. And then I read in Daniel chapter 4 and a perfect illustration of this. And you get into Daniel chapter 4 and uh, God gives Nebuchadnezzar a warning. Now, you, you think in the history right now, Nebuchadnezzar was the world power. I mean, we're, we're talking about very powerful, very eccentric, very dangerous. I mean, this guy <laughs> was a nutcase and, and uh, all power. I, I mean, he had already thought himself to be God in chapter three and had set up a statue of himself to be worshiped. I mean, we're, we're talking about this guy was as powerful in the world as, as there was at the time. And so we're, we're not talking about some pushover here. And, and it goes, it bodes well for us to remember this even today that God's got things under control because he goes and, and Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And we know that, that uh, Daniel has proven himself to be an interpreter of the dreams. And, and so he, uh, he has this dream. And so he brings uh, Daniel, whose name, the Babylonian name is Belteshazzar, and, and uh, brings him in front of him and says, look, I need an interpretation uh, of this dream. And, and he tells him the dream. And in the dream, it says that, he cried aloud, this is verse 14, chapter 4, and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a brand of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts and the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. So this is what God told Nebuchadnezzar. And so Nebuchadnezzar is telling Daniel about this. And and then it goes on and, and Daniel gives the interpretation in, in verse 24. And he says, this is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the most high, which has come upon my Lord, the king that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, the kingdom shall be sure unto thee after that thou shall have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. So here he told he, he just said, Look, you 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 are you are going to become like an animal, and for seven years you're gonna act that way. You're not gonna lose your kingdom because that's the stump and that's the branches that are gonna come up from it. But you, you are definitely going to understand that God has control. And and so you would think he would listen to this, right? Well, let's go on in verse 32. And, and, and uh, uh, actually in verse 30, this is what Nebuchadnezzar said. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? I mean, I... We, we look at people today and trying to build their own kingdoms, and they are. I mean, we, we have that. We have the, you know, all of the corruption even in our own country. And, and, and we think, how in the world can they have so much power? And, and we need to understand that, that God allows certain things, but, 
but God is still the one that's under control. We need to remember that. And so here the King Nebuchadnezzar says, look at this great empire that I have built. And then verse 32, and here he, he says that God is speaking to him and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth to whomsoever he will. God can do whatever God wants to do. And it, it, it's it, it's our position to pray, ask God to to show his power. We we ask that God would uh bring righteousness to light and and to uh to rule and and judgment to light and to you know to to bring out the the wickedness that's going on and and know that that um a God is the one that's under control. And you know what I think is awesome on this? And some would disagree with me, but you go ahead and you read the rest of chapter four. And 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 I just believe that Nebuchadnezzar realized that God was under control. I, I, I believe Nebuchadnezzar got saved. Maybe he didn't. I believe he did because it, here's his testimony in verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me. And so now he has his understanding. So he's not like the animal anymore. And, and he says, my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the most high. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. I, I, I think it's awesome. I, I think that, that he saw that that he was in all kinds of trouble and 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 that God showed how powerful he was and and it truly humbled Nebuchadnezzar. I you know, I've had friends disagree with me and that's all right. And I guess we'll we'll know when we get to heaven, but I just believe that there was a repentant heart in in the heart of Nebuchadnezzar and and look, who wouldn't who wouldn't if you if you see the power of God on your life like that and the judgment of God upon your life like that? I mean, you can't stand up to perfection. And a majority of people, well, when you read those that did run into God, the first response they had was down on their knees. And and I just think that it was uh, an encouragement to me today to understand that God has things under control. And it, it doesn't matter how, how, it does matter how wicked things are. I, I, don't, I'm, I, mean, I don't want it to be that way. You, you don't want it to be that way. We don't, we don't want to see the world uh, get that way. And, and we, we want it to be a moral country and, and we want to be a peaceful country where there's not all this injustice and, and, and craziness going on. I mean, that's what's causing a lot of stress. We know that, but we need to realize that even in the midst of all this chaos and this crazy world, we can still live the way that God wants us to live. And, and God expects that God, God wants us to do that. God ne never does God say that we can justify uh, reacting in an ungodly way. He wants us to walk maturely in his word walk uprightly. And, and then I read in second Peter chapter one, and here he shows us how to walk uprightly. I, I mean, it, it definitely was a theme in my devotion today as I read this and it's like, okay, th this is what I take from this today and, and how I need to do these things and, and apply them to my life, my life. And, you know, even in a discussion with, with Nelson today, how, how important it is, you know, one of the signs of maturity is being able to take the word of God, read it and apply it and, and apply it to our own lives and in, in how we need to be living and, and walking in a way that's honoring to God. And that is maturity. And, and you know, I, I think a, a sign of immaturity is someone that that knows Christ as their savior and they read something in the word and they're just stubborn and don't want to do it. And uh, God's going to break you. I mean, he, he breaks us all. And you don't want to live that way. You, you want to uh, take what you learn and apply it. You know, don't, don't be a disobedient child to God. 
and think that you're going to get away with that. God's not going to allow that. And, and he is going to bring you around to where he wants you. He's never going to quit on you. When, when you're his, you're his forever. And, and he's not going to quit on you. And we should be thankful for that. And so let's <clears throat> a sign of maturity then is whatever you want, God. It, it's, it's less of me and, and, and it's all of you. And, and I want you to, to, to have my life and, and use my life how you want it to be. And, and that's not, that's for everybody. That's not just those in a full-time ministry. That's every one of us where, where we wake up, we read the word of God, Lord, what is it you have for me today? And give him that. And, and don't, you, you just live in God's will, not your own. And, and that is maturity. And how do you get to that? Well, he tells us here in Second Peter chapter 1, and he tells us in verse 3, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That's awesome, isn't it? I mean, he, he has given to us freely, okay? As a child of God, in his divine power, his omnipotent power, all power, he's given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Not only eternal life, but our life today and how we ought to be living. And so let's live in this chaotic world in the way that represents godliness. And so how do we do that? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So th this knowledge is a complete knowledge of him. You get that complete knowledge by spending time in his word, by applying his word, by, by walking with him and by, by trusting him, not only for your salvation, but trusting that, okay, God, I need to trust you that you got this taken care of. You, you can handle this. And, and, and I'm just going to live peacefully in, in my heart and in my mind. And, and even in all the chaos, I know that you have this under control. And, and, and you learn to have a complete knowledge of him. And, and, that, and he's called us to glory and virtue. And, and, and so now the, the glory is splendor and magnificence. And in being a child of God and, and in his glory, his magnificence. And and virtue is a moral excellence that that God gives us. He gives us a new way of thinking. Even in an immoral world, we don't think like the world. We we think differently than the rest of the world. We we think like God thinks, and 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 that's what it, that is part of maturity is where where we start thinking like God thinks, and and because we have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us, and and we allow Him to control our minds and and our thoughts and our actions and. I mean, it's in, in, we do this through growth and, and every day we're learning more about who he is. And, and then he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So let's take the promises of God and let's apply them to our lives that, and that by these, these promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature and, and God's divine nature, the the, the the perfect nature that that uh, 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 God God has and and that's what we represent in our lives is is Christ living in us and that's the divine nature and and the divine nature that having escaped the corruption that is in the the world through lust I mean no longer are we driven by lust no longer are we driven by covetousness no longer are we driven by our sin nature and in our sinful mind, but but we have a, a divine nature that has changed our way of thinking, that that gives us peace in the midst of a chaotic world and and and, and these promises that show us that we have escaped that. I mean we're we're a new creature in Christ and 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 we don't have to live like the rest of the world and, and we don't have to be in the chaos and we don't have to be in the distress and and we really can have the joy that that God gives us. But he tells us also that it takes work because he says, and beside this, giving all diligence. So 
if we're going to be diligent in something, if 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 we're going to be better at something, and and you know, Jeff, I see you're on here, you know, and and probably still, you know, refing games if they're having any or whatever. But I know you're very involved in sports, and and you watch those kids. If those kids are going to get any better at basketball, or if they're going to get any better at football, or whatever the sport is, they have to be diligent in their work. And and it's the same way with believers. We sometimes we think that. We can sit on the couch and say, okay, God, here I am, bless me, and help me to become a mature believer. And that isn't the way it is. I mean, we got to get up. We got to walk. We got to, we got to go out into the world and, and, and live in the world, but not be of the world. And, and it takes diligence to, to represent the divine nature and, and quit being carnal and quit being worldly and quit letting the world dictate to us what we want or what we do or, how we act. And, you know, I, I get tired of preachers who, who want to, to try to represent the world and still bring the word of God in. You, you know what? We need to be different. We need to set an example and, and, and be different in who we are. Not, not on purpose, but we just are diligent in walking in a way that God wants us to walk, not representing the world, but representing Christ in who we are. And so we give it diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And we already saw virtue is a moral excellence. Morally, we need to be thinking differently than the rest of the world. And then you add to virtue knowledge and, and, and knowledge. We need to have a complete knowledge of God, but, but this knowledge comes through, this is a different knowledge. This is a, a personal experience. And so let's experience God because the more you walk in the world, the more challenges you have, the more you need to trust God to, to, to have the right thinking and, and, you know, preparing ourselves to have the right actions. And, and the more we do that, the more we apply God's word, the more we understand the power of the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us, protecting us, and providing for us through all of that. And then to add to knowledge, temperance. You need to have self-control. There are times there are things you just don't need to say. There, there are things that on, on social media you just don't need to share. There are, there are things that that in your relationship that you need to forget about and move on. I, I, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that, that show us that we need to have temperance and, and a self-control. And, and then not only that, then it says add to that patience. And that's, that's being steadfast. That, that's enduring. And, and right now, we are enduring. You know, we, we need to, with all this politics and all this craziness of the election, you know what? We, we do need to have patience. We need to allow God to, to work during this. And, and we need to be praying that God reveals, look, if, if people cheated, and it sure looks like they did, we need to pray that God reveals that and, and brings it to light and, and allow God to do that and, and not walk around in such a boil all the time that, that we're just mad at everybody and mad at everything and, and, and rather, we need to have patience and endurance and, and understand that God has it under control. Ask Nebuchadnezzar. He understood. Yeah, God's got this. I don't. And we need to remember that. And, and, and so patience. And then add to patience, godliness. And, and we need to be godly in our behavior. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know who we are, you know, to think that that we can represent anyone but our father. We need to represent our father. And Rayanne, there are times where we, we lose ourselves, you know, and we and we lose control. And 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 one of the signs of maturity is that you confess it, you get it right with God, and, and if you need to, you get it right with your neighbor, and then you move on and and you grow and, and you have more control next time and you learn that it doesn't help, you know, losing your cool and 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 because then it brings us to the next one, because not only do you add to godliness, but you also add brotherly kindness. And, and, and so, and not only brotherly kindness, but that brotherly kindness brings you to charity. That's the Christ love. That, that's a love that the world has no idea about. It, it, it's, a, it's a love that Christ gave himself on that cross for the sins of all mankind, God is the only one that could do that. God is the only one that can give you 
that love. The world never has agape love. The world never understands what charity truly is because it comes only from God. And, and that's a love that we need to have in our hearts and in our minds. And, and it needs to direct us. And for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That's carnality. That, that's a weak believer. That, that's not where you want to be. That, that's where you have those that just suck on the milk and, and never eat of the meat of the word. And, and we need to get past that. And wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election firm and sure and secure. Make sure it's sure. For if you do these things, you should never fail. You know, one of the one of the first things I see in an immature believer is when they start becoming disobedient and start living back in their old lifestyle, first thing they start doing is doubting their salvation. And look, if you placed your faith in Christ as your Savior, you're saved. You're a part of the family of God. Now behave that way. That's what God's telling us. Because when you don't behave that way, then then you start doubting the things that you have. And then then you start doubting the power of God. Then you start doubting the word of God. And and, and pretty soon you're representing the world uh, uh, again in your life. And you've forgotten that your sins have been purged. And quit doing that. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, that's the truth of the fact of the matter is that quit living like the world and start living like God wants you to live. That's for every one of us. And so let's do that. And... And let's, let's live in the way that God wants us to live in this crazy world and we'll still see his blessings. I mean, that's awesome. The thing that in all this chaotic junk going on around us, we can have peace, we can have confidence, and we can have joy in knowing that God's got this and he'll take care of us. And he does. And, and so I, it, it's just a good thought for me today. It, it's a help to me to... Go into the weekend and be prepared and, and walk with him and be honoring to him and, and and we'll see God's blessings on our lives. And whatever happens in the world, it, it, it'll it be okay. It will be okay. We need to follow God. We need to apply God's word and we'll see his blessings. So let's add these things to our to our walk and, and let's make sure that we're adding these things daily and and, and being diligent in doing that and and we'll see god's hands upon our lives so and when we fail you know what that's why first john 1 9 is in there for believers that we we look when we when we sin we confess it to god he cleanses us of all unrighteousness and and restores us to where we need to be so confess it to god get it right with him and then move on and you'll see god's blessings on your life so hope you guys have a great weekend we got church on sunday uh, 10 45 five o'clock in the evening love for you to come and uh you know what have a great weekend and uh god bless you today and, and have a great day today